As a beginner composer, do you struggle to write effectively for the woodwind section? Hi, it's Simon from Composing Academy, and today I'm going to walk you through step by step how to write and orchestrate for a woodwind section such as this. Now the woodwind section is known for its range of tone colours and variety of sounds. Although not as powerful in volume as the brass or string sections, each instrument in the woodwind family has a very distinct sound, and this helps to give the section as a whole a huge amount of versatility. A typical orchestral woodwind section could have between 8 and 12 players, and is usually made up of 2 to 3 flutes, 2 to 3 oboes, 2 to 3 clarinets, and 2 to 3 bassoons. Each set of woodwind instruments normally has an additional auxiliary instrument which is included in these numbers and these can help extend the range and give additional tonal colours, such as the piccolo in the flute family. So let's take a look at the individual instruments that make up the woodwind family. The flute section is the highest pitched instrument family in the woodwind section, and can play with both great agility and sensitivity. The flute's range is from middle C up to a C three octaves above, and it generally has four registers. In its low register, it is more of a warm and rich sound, but this comes with a lack of power. Its middle register is pure and clear, but again at the expense of power. The mid to upper register is where the flute really shines, and is expressive, clean and brilliant as well as louder. Its upper register starts to become a bit shrill though. Because of its agility, the flute is perfect for fast runs or scales, together with arpeggios. The flute section's additional instrument is the piccolo and its main role is to help extend the upper range of the flutes. It has a sounding range starting at 2 Ds above middle C, and then goes all the way up to the 5th C above middle C. The piccolo is a transposing instrument. The note that's heard is actually an octave higher than the note which is written on the page. This isn't hugely important if you're just composing using samples, but it's something to be aware of if you get the chance to compose for real instruments and players. Unlike the flutes, the oboes produce a sound by utilising two wooden reeds in the mouthpiece. This gives the instrument a very distinct sound compared to the flutes. Its range is from the B flat below middle C up to a G three octaves above middle C. Its low register is thick and nasally, while the middle register is ideally suited for playing expressively, particularly for melodies. The high register quickly becomes thin sounding though, losing some of its tonal characteristics. Because of the oboe's expressiveness, particularly in its middle register, it's an ideal instrument for melodies. The oboe section's additional instrument is the cor anglais, or also sometimes called the English horn. The cor anglais helps to extend the oboe section's range down by five more notes, with these lowest notes being extremely rich and expressive. Unlike the oboe, the cor anglais is a transposing instrument, meaning that the note which is heard is different than the note which is actually written. For the cor anglais, when a note is written, a note a perfect fifth lower will be heard instead. So if a C is written, the note of F will be the note which is actually heard. Next we have the clarinet. Unlike the oboe, which uses two reeds, the clarinet only uses one reed in the mouthpiece to make a sound, helping to distinguish it from the double reed instruments. It's an extremely versatile instrument, and is able to play expressively in all sections of its register. Although clarinets come in a few different versions, the most common is the clarinet in B flat, which is a transposing instrument again. When a C is written on the printed music, the note of B flat will actually be heard, hence its name. The clarinet's written range is from the E below middle C up to a high A, three octaves above middle C. For the B flat clarinet, therefore its sounding range will be from the D below middle C up to the third G above middle C. The clarinet's low register is characterized by a dark and rich sound, but with also much less power. The middle register is particularly expressive, and like the oboe, is useful for melodies. The highest end of its register is the most powerful in terms of volume, and can be described as piercing or shrill. The clarinet is able to play quiet passages within any of its register, making it useful for more softer sections of music. Given its versatility, the clarinet is useful for melodies, blending with other instruments for additional orchestration colour, 
as well as performing fast runs, scales, and arpeggios. The clarinet family's additional instrument is the bass clarinet, which, like the core anglais for the oboe, helps to extend the low end range of the clarinet. It's also a transposing instrument, and if written in the treble clef, which is most common nowadays, it sounds an octave plus a second, or a major ninth, below the written note. Therefore, its written range is from the E below middle C up to C two octaves above middle C, and its sounding range is two Ds below middle C up to the B flat above middle C. Finally, we come to the bassoon. The bassoon is the bass or lowest instrument family in the woodwind section, and like the oboe, is also a double reeded instrument. Like the other instruments, it's again very versatile, capable of playing lyrically and expressively, whilst also being able to produce very effective short staccato notes as well. The bassoon is notated in the bass clef and has a range starting from the third B flat below middle C up to the second E flat above middle C. It has a dark and rich sounding low end before becoming more sweet and expressive in its middle range. Like a lot of the other woodwind instruments, its high end is often particularly thin and weak, although it's sometimes useful for lyrical melodic passages. Bassoons can be a useful colour when blended with low pizzicatos from the basses and cellos, especially in comedy music. The bassoon family's additional instrument is the contrabassoon, which again extends the range down by an octave and sounds an octave lower than written. So here I have a short orchestral comedy piece, mocked up using samples in Cubase. I'll walk through each section of the piece, detailing the woodwind writing and how it works in context with the rest of the orchestra. You can see that I'm using the basic set of woodwind instruments, including flutes, oboes, clarinets and bassoons. As the music is quite fast paced, woodwinds are primarily playing in a short staccato style of playing. The sample library I'm using is Berlin Woodwinds by Orchestral Tools, which is my go-to library for woodwinds. For the purpose of the video, I'll only show the woodwind parts in the score and MIDI editor. Also note that the score is in C, which means that the clarinets, which are transposing instruments, are displaying their written pitches and not their sounding pitches. So here for the opening, you can see that for the first four bars, I only have one bar of just the bassoons. This helps to highlight the first pointer for writing for woodwinds. They are often used to help add colour and variety to an orchestration, so they do not need to be used all of the time. Often in orchestral writing, the string section is the backbone of the orchestra, playing most of the time. Woodwind and brass instruments are often used to punctuate phrases or parts, as is the case here with the bassoons, which are blending with the pizzicato low strings to help give a comedic colour to the opening. After the short introduction, you can see that the oboes and bassoons are playing the main melodic material in bars 5 to 8, whilst the strings are providing the harmonic and rhythmic accompaniment. Woodwinds are great at playing melodies either as the main orchestration colour, or also part of a blend with other instruments playing the melody, such as the violins or trumpets. Both oboes have the melody, whilst the bassoons are playing it with the added harmony of thirds. There's also a short flute flourish at the end of bar 7. Flutes in particular are great at fast flourishes like this due to their agility, and this helps to add extra rhythmic interest to the music. Let's take a listen. One of the most important parts regarding woodwind writing is that you need to make sure you give the player time to breathe. While of course this doesn't matter if you're just using samples, it will help to make your composing more idiomatic and realistic sounding if you adhere to the conventional techniques of woodwind writing. You can see that for most of bars 8 to 11, there are no woodwinds playing, shifting the focus to just the strings and percussion for a colour change, as well as giving the woodwinds a brief rest. A variation of the previous melody then appears briefly in bars 13 and 14, with the clarinets being used for the first time, before another quick flute run enters in bar 15. One of my favourite techniques for adding comedy elements to a piece is the trill, which is a technique which rapidly alternates between the main note and in this case, the next semitone up, here in the clarinets in bars 16 and 17.
Baritine sees the bassoons blending with the low string pizzicato lines again, before the clarinets join them for a short descending chromatic pattern played in thirds in bar 19. Moving on, the melody is given to the top flute in bars 20 to 22, with the second flute and first oboe playing in harmony together, so that the three woodwind instruments are playing in triads. Again there is another fast flute run from bar 22 going into 23, showing off the agility of the flutes, in addition to adding a little bit of melodic interest. Bars 27 and 28 are another example of the woodwinds blending with other instruments in the orchestra, this time the trumpets. First it's the oboes and bassoons, then it's followed by the flutes. Bars 30 and 31 are another example of the agility of the flutes, with them this time playing fast chromatic rising runs. I've also added the piccolo samples to help give more weight to the figure as well. I've tried to make sure that if this was played by a real woodwind section, that the players would have enough time to breathe. Frequent rests, such as in bars 32 and 33, are an easy way to ensure this. Bars 33 to 34 feature the flutes, oboes and bassoons playing the melody, again harmonised in thirds and blending with the celeste, to help give a magical sound. The flutes are then used to double the fast violin passage in bar 36, with the clarinets outlining the harmony followed by the trill in 37. Finally, from bar 38 to the end, I've experimented with different woodwind colours, all the time blending with the strings. I've tried different combinations, including using the flutes and bassoons together in bar 38, or single instruments such as the clarinets only in bar 41. So now we've seen how each part is written, let's take a listen to the whole cue. So that's a brief introduction into the writing and orchestrating for the woodwind section. Whilst the strings typically provide the main sonic foundation in an orchestral context, the woodwinds are often used to add variety to the sound and orchestration. This can be achieved by doubling melodic passages, often with the strings, and by playing fast rhythmic parts like runs or trills, which can also help to add extra energy to a piece. Woodwinds can also be great at providing harmonic support, particularly through playing passages such as fast arpeggios. Also remember that even if you're just using samples, try to write as if you're using real woodwind players, as this will make your woodwind writing much more realistic. If you found the video useful, as always, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more composing tutorials and tips. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comments below as well.